he's alive. Death could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. We serve the risen king. Come on, clap your hands. Say.
seek ye the living among the dead. He is not here, but is risen. All hail the risen Christ, forever he shall reign. Praise God, the King is alive. He no more lies behind the stone. By grace through faith we are made his own. He is the only way. O grave, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sin? He conquered them all on Calvary's cross. Jesus the Christ, that's my King. Somebody shot in the room, that's my King. I can't hear you. Somebody shot in the room, say, that's my King. Hey, hallelujah. Listen, I wish I could tell you. Wish I could describe it. But I can't contain it. Can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to paint the whole picture. There aren't enough words to ever say what I found. Yeah. Wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is wonderful. And
had died on the cross just a few days earlier. All of his family and friends were sad. After he died, he had been buried in a tomb. His family and friends missed him very much. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene and some other women went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she cried, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Woman, why are you crying? <laughs> they have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary. Now Mary recognized him. It was Jesus. He was alive. Mary Magdalene ran to tell the disciples the news. I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. Now all of Jesus' friends and family were happy. Jesus is alive. Happy Easter. Jesus is He's alive. alive. Happy Easter. God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, give him a great big hand. Woo. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> well, bless God. Bless God. Happy Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> We're going to once again break up our, our, our sermon a little bit today as we did on, on Good Friday. But you know what is so good? It is so good to see you. Now, I, I know that I normally say that on a Sunday, but you know, my, my mind went back this morning. My mind went back to that very first, that very first uh, Resurrection Sunday. Not, not so much in the Bible, but 
in the day of COVID. Anybody remember those days? Anybody remember those days? There was five of us in the room. Five of us in the room. I was preaching to uh, a camera, trying to preach faith, and, and everybody was predicting the, uh, the end of the world. And look around today. Look around today. Uh, we, are, we are so thankful. <laughs> hey, come on. It's a great day. It's a great day. It's the day that the Lord has made. And as always, there, there was a day. There was a day early in the morning. Early in the morning, bless God. The, the Bible says that the stone was rolled away. The stone was rolled away, and, and he came forth out of the grave, defeating the cross, the crucifixion, defeating death itself, and, and swallowing up death. Because how many know that death is an enemy? It's an enemy. But in God and in Christ, we have, we have life. We have life. And, and my friends, today I want you to understand this is the gospel. This is the gospel, the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The death and the resurrection. Without a resurrection, we have no faith. Without a resurrection, there is no hope. Without a resurrection, there is, there is no promise. And, and this is what the first believers, the apostles did. They, they what? They gave witness to the resurrection of Jesus. The, the, the early church and, and the book of Acts is all about giving witness to the power and the resurrection of Christ that everything he said had now come to pass. You know, the, the calendar itself, I want you to think about this, the calendar itself, my friends, you, are, you and I are in 2024, why? Because literally this event split time in two. Whether people like it, don't like it, agree with it, disagree with it, what, whatever they may say. Isn't it interesting that the calendar and time changed, right, from B.C. to A.D.Y. because of this event today, because of the resurrection. Somebody ought to give God praise for that. And the beauty is that he's coming back again. The beauty is that that he is returning. And even as the children there were mentioning the scripture, I want you to look at John chapter 20 and 16. Speaking of Mary Magdalene, isn't it? I heard the, the children say, supposing he was the gardener. I thought to myself, he is the gardener. <laughs> he is the, the heavenly gardener that restores that, that connection. But, but here in verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary... And she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher, uh, amazingly that when he said her name, her eyes were open. She knew where he was. And, and Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, watch this, I am ascending to my father and to your father and to my God and to your God. And, and Mary came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. And of course, like good apostles, they didn't even believe her. But I want you to see something here, church. I want you to see that to the very first person that he conversed with, the one that, the one that saw him alive, the one that saw him alive, he makes this statement, I am ascending, I, I am going somewhere, Mary. I'm, I'm going to my father, and to my God, but watch what he says, I am going to your Father and to your God. In other words, what Jesus was saying is, I have redefined the relationship with God, that no longer is he just God or he is creator, he is actually Father. He is actually Father. I, I was speaking to somebody this week, and, and they were telling me about this podcaster who's, who's become very, very popular, and, and, and in the midst of their, their, their podcast, they, they began to tell people that they're praying and, and they're reading the Bible, and that's awesome. But, but my friends, you understand that there are people that pray to God, but he's not necessarily their father. Hmm? There are people that pray to God, but he's not necessarily their father. And, and of course, for you and I, we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, because Jesus taught us to pray to the Father. He said, in this manner shall you pray. And I, I began to think about this. 
go tell them I'm ascending to to my father and to your father. And, and, and you know, the, the thing that caught me was how this woman who's crying literally arrests Jesus. Like before he goes to the father, he deals with a weeping woman. You know, for me, I'm like, she'll get over it. I'll come back. Let me go up, Mary. I'll, I'll come back. But in the Lord's excitement, enthusiasm to reveal himself, but more importantly to reveal the Father. We have been talking about Yeshua HaMashiach and, and one of the things that I want to talk about today is that we have found the Father. We have found the Father. We have found the Father. I would argue that the greatest thing that Christ did for us on Resurrection Sunday was not purchase our salvation. I, I know that's our focus. We're going to heaven. We're going to live with the Lord. And, 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 and yes, that's wonderful and amazing. But I believe the greatest thing that Jesus did for us was he helped us to find the Father. That he's brought us back to the Father. And, and from the Father flow all things. From the Father flow all things. And I, I began to think about the sequential order that he says, first of all, my Father and your father, and my God, and your God. He mentions him as father, even before he mentions him as God. And I began to think about what do fathers do? What do they do? Well, they provide. Uh, fathers are providers. Fathers are protectors. Uh, fathers, by their very presence, make a difference. And, of course, fathers are are passionate. Our, the Bible tells us that that God is love. If, if you are a father today, if you are a man, and you do not know how to love your wife, love your children, how to display proper affection, I, I would suggest to you that you're locked up in your emotions and God wants to set you free because God is the God of love. God is the God of love. God is the God of affection. And so I, I thought to myself, well, if he's the Lord's Father, and now He's my Father, what does that mean to us? How many, how many understand that if you're in Christ, then the things that apply to Christ must also apply to us? Is that, is that, a, fair, is that a fair theory that I can make? And so I, I began to look at the Scriptures, and I thought, all right, well, what did the Father do for Jesus? Well, you know, famous words at the Jordan and also at the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17, 5, while he was still speaking, this is Jesus, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear him. This is my beloved son. By the way, it was Peter speaking and talking about, hey, let's, let, let's live here. Let's, I'll build a couple of tents and we'll, we'll stay up here. And, and the father speaks. And what does the father do? The first thing the father does is he identifies and he gives his son identity. This is my beloved son. The first thing we find in the Father is we find what? We find our identity. And particularly, you know, that we're living in a day where people are so lost and so confused and, and trying to find themselves and really operating by feeling and, and, in, and in the worst case scenario, literally taking their own lives. I, I want you to understand that God has the prescription. He says, I'm your Father. I'm your father. I'm your father. This is my beloved son. And, and identity speaks of what? It speaks of belonging. It speaks of possession. You, you belong to me. You are, you are mine. And there's nothing greater than to know that we belong to the father. But then he says, not only is this my beloved son, but we should hear him. Not only do we see identity, but we see affirmation. I am well pleased. I am well pleased. You know, we don't have a problem believing that God is angry at us, that God is mad at us, that he's nitpicking at something, that there's something going on in our lives that needs correction and, and needs adjustment. We, we see Father as this hostile God, but we never understand, could there be moments that God is actually well pleased in you? Do, do you ever experience in your time with the Father do you ever experience times of, of pleasure, of, of knowing that the Father approves of you? Because when we talk about affirmation, what we are saying is that it adds value to people. It adds, it adds value to people. I, I remember being this, this you know, young person, young, you know, young boy, whatever, and playing sports. And, and, and all, I, all I wanted to hear my father say was that he was proud of me, that, that I had done well, that I had done a, that I had done a good job, and, that, and whether I had done it or not didn't matter if my father thought I had done it that's all that mattered come on somebody God's pleased with you there are things that 
that we do that God is pleased with. Why? Because of who we are. Because we, we are his, his sons. We are his daughters. Does, does that mean we're perfect? No. Does, how about your children? Are your children perfect? Hmm? Your children are perfect. Your children are perfect, yet you love them. And they all have their own little character, don't they? I remember uh, Good Friday, I was talking to Kimberly. Uh, come on, everybody, let, let's just honor our sister Kimberly. And uh, I, was, I was talking to her daughters, and they're so, they're so beautiful, and they're so bl- brightly dressed today. And, and, uh, and I'm talking to them, and I, I figured out quickly, I said to Kim, I said, this is the spicy one, isn't she? She goes, she goes Pastor, don't talk to her because she'll give you my bank account. She'll give you every. She'll give you everything there is. To, I'm like, praise God, you know. And so, uh, but 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 how many know that that we love all our children? We love all our children, even though they are they are very different. Different sometimes, maybe they're 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 even you know a little bit naughty, <laughs> right? And and uh, but listen, there are no bad children. Come on, there are no bad children. Praise God. And so, so we get identity. We get identity from the Father. We get affirmation from the Father. And then Jesus said this. Jesus said this in John 6, 57. He said, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. And so here's what Jesus is saying, that, that in the Father there is life. Everybody say life. That in the Father there, there is life. That, that there is the source. God is the source of life. And, and here's what Jesus was saying. I live because of the Father. I live because of the Father. In other words, he's saying, this is, this is the secret to my life. This is why I can handle persecution and, 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 and all the, the nasty things that are said about me and all the innuendos that have followed me all my, all my life. And you tell me that I cast out demons by the prince of demons and, and all the things they wanted to accuse him of and curse him of. And, and he would just say, no, no, no. I reject all of it because I know where I am from. I know who my Father is. And I receive my life from the Father. And then because of it, because of it, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I'm the real manna, that that manna that the children of Israel ate. They're all dead now, even though it was a blessing to them at the time. But you know what he's saying? The the ones that eat this bread, the one that eat this bread, where did this bread come from? The bread that came from the Father. The Father sent this bread. He said, if you will eat this bread, you'll never die. This is resurrection life. You You will never die. And so many people, I just even heard this this week, you know, so many people, they always make this statement, well, you have one life to live, you know, so you might as well party it up. When, when, when they make that statement, what they're really saying is, do all the bad things you can, enjoy life, because, hey, listen, tomorrow we go to hell. My friends, listen, if you only have one life to live, then you might as well live it getting to know the Father. <laughs> okay? Your identity, your affirmation, your, your well-being, your confidence, your emotional and mental health. I want to tell you right now that this is, this is not just a marketing sermon today. I'm not just talking about a, some, some, some nice words and some nice things that, that'll make you feel better. This is truth. This is reality. Literally, if you will know the Father, it'll revolutionize your life. It'll revolutionize your faith. We have found the Father. He is the meaning of life. He, he is the source of life. And we know that That the life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. We heard Pastor Moses tell us on Good Friday, if you weren't here, that that when the angel of death was to come over the land of, of Egypt, that Moses was instructed by God to put blood on the mantle, on the post, on the door. And, and he said that the doors were created in such a way that when they, would, when they would paint the blood over the doors, it was actually the letter, the Hebrew letter, for life. It was the Hebrew letter for life. Our God is the God of life. He's not the God of death. He is the God of life. God loves life. And he has come to restore us. He has, he has come so that we might have life. By the way, this is what actually killed Jesus. I don't know if you're aware of this. You think it's the, the nails. You think it's the beatings. You think it's the loss of blood. You think it's the crucifixion. None of that, none of that killed Jesus. But he said something on the cross. He said something when he became sin for you and I. 
so that you and I would become the righteousness of God at the moment where he drank the cup and, and the exchange took place and the father looked at him for the first time ever and the Bible says he turned away. The holy God could not even look upon the disdain. The son had become a disdain to him, had, had become so grotesque, had become so sinful because of us. And Jesus uttered these words knowing now, after everything he had been through, knowing now that truly the father had left him. He said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And my friends, I want to submit to you that it was that that killed the son. It was that that would not allow him to live any longer. He, he was, I could take the nails. I could take the beatings. I could take the thorn. I, I could take all that you dish out. But I cannot live without the Father. And I want you to know this morning, our God is a beautiful God. Come on, worship to you.
and give it to him. My yes belongs to you. My life belongs to you. Ooh, the spirit of the Lord is in this place. Yes. Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus. Y'all help me sing it. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. It tells me so. The word of the Lord declares it and therefore I believe it. Sweeter than springtime, purer than sunshine, ever my song will be. Jesus, say you're beautiful. Hallelujah. Well, happy Sunday, church. It's Resurrection Sunday. The tomb is empty. Jesus is risen. Come on, we have a reason to celebrate today. So awesome. So awesome. Hey, listen, I want to welcome you on this Resurrection Sunday to our 10 o'clock service. I'm Pastor Moses. I'm one of the pastors here. Just privilege and honor to be part of this incredible community that we call All People's Church. I want to welcome those of you watching online. Yeah, come on, we can praise God for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just so good, so good. Hey, can you do me a favor? If there are extra seats in your row, uh, can you just squish towards the middle so that the ends are open, so that our wonderful ushers can know where the empty seats are and we can help people not stand all of the service, amen? And so if you could just squish in and uh, just leave the, the ends open, if there is room in your rows, we would just greatly appreciate that so our service hosts can find seats for people. Yeah, if you could just squeeze and leave the, leave the ends open. If you got room in the middle, leave the ends open. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate that. So good. Well, listen, I wanna talk to you just a moment, for a moment about giving and giving to our incredible God. How many know that Jesus is the King? Yeah, he sits, he sits on the throne and the fact that the tomb is empty means that he's the king. He's the king and I don't know if you know this, but kings have special privileges. <laughs> kings, can do other, kings can do things that other people cannot. Uh, kings have authority that others do not. That's the privilege of being a king. And the beauty of our king is our king is generous. Come on, I said our king is generous. He is incredibly generous. And I want you to know that the Father has given us his son, but he's also, along with that, given us a gift. And if Jesus were not to be raised from the dead, we would not be recipients of this gift. Let me read to you out of Luke chapter 12. It says this, but seek his kingdom. And all these will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. What do you get along with the king? You get his kingdom. You get his kingdom. For Paul says, hey, the one who gave us his son, the one who freely gave us his son, how will he not with him also give us all things? Give us all things. I want you to know the Father gives you the kingdom. Yes. Here's what I want you to do just before I pray. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. Just close your eyes for a moment and I want you to use your imagination. And I want you to imagine the Father 
giving you the kingdom as if it were a present. Just imagine the Father giving you the kingdom. And he's got a huge smile on his face because he is pleased to do that. He gives it to you freely. When I begin to think about that, I think, how, how can I not respond with generosity to this incredible God? How can I not give him everything of my life because he's freely given me all things? Service host, come on up. If you wanna give through your phone, you'll see a QR code behind me if you're old school. There are envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you. You can give cash and check and put it in the baskets as the service host come. But let me pray. Father, thank you so much. You've given us your son and your kingdom. And you are pleased to do that. You rejoice as you do that. And so in this moment of generosity, Father, we give back knowing all things come from you. We say that we love you and we wanna honor you and keep you first. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Go ahead, service host. It's just a couple of announcements and the worship team is gonna lead us again. Um, April 14th, I want, to, I want you to mark this in your calendars. And if you're a forgetful person, then take a picture of the slide. April 14th, we are uh, doing Social Sunday. Social Sunday. Now, you may be asking, what is Social Sunday? Really, it's an opportunity and it's a time uh, for us to just experience the community that God has placed us in here at APC. And so after each service, we're actually going to create room. We're going to create space uh, for us to fellowship, for us to uh, talk to one another, for you to actually experience church life. I don't know if you know this, but church life, the life of the church, does not exist in the atmosphere. The life of the church actually exists in you. And so we want to give you an opportunity to experience church life with the community you call church. And the best part is, there's gonna be treats. There's gonna be treats, and after every service, we wanna bless you. We're gonna have some fellowship, we're gonna have some food, and I, 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 think, I think we ought to have a value in our church that we ought to be the first ones coming, but we should not be the first ones to leave. We should not be the first ones to leave. And we should actually experience the life that God has put inside this community. So April 14th, man, it's going to be an incredible time. And then uh, I want you to head to guest services after the service, and I want you to pre-order our merch. We've got hoodies, we've got t-shirts uh, tied into the Easter theme of Yeshua HaMashiach. And so you're going to be a walking billboard of Jesus being the Messiah. And the beautiful thing is, it's in Hebrew. And so people will ask you, hey, what's that all about? And you get to tell them about Jesus. And that's just incredible. So make sure you do that. Worship team, you ready? All right, come on. Can we stand to our feet as the worship team leads us once again? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together. We're celebrating our King. We see him high and lifted up. Come on. Clap your hands, everybody. Yeah. Through every battle. I'll keep my eyes on you yeah. Cause you're more than able Able to bring me through Bring me through oh, oh, oh. You specialize in impossible things Lord, I believe it I see your goodness I see you working I see your favor Grace and mercy say
picture his throne. Picture him. Glory to God. You specialize in impossible things. Lord, you are able. Nothing's too hard. You can do anything. Come on, say, Lord, you are faithful. Yeah. You specialize in impossible. Everybody say, Lord, you are able. Oh, 
Let's declare it now. Nail piercings are holding. Come on, Zion, lift it up with us. A crown of thorns.
if you need the deliverer, come on, raise your voice and call him. Yes, I see those tears. Call him. Yes, come on, let it go and call. Come on, team, just say it softly. Jesus. Come on, if you need a healer, call him. If you need him to transform your mind, call him. If you need him to heal your marriage, call him. If you need him to revive your body, call him. If you need spiritual reviving, call him. If your spirit man needs to be awake, call him. Somebody call the name. It's the only name that has power to save. It's the only name that has power to deliver. And that at the name of Redeemer's bow. Oh. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands oh, and call them. Lift your hands. Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No other name. No other name. No other name. No other name. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hey. No other name, no other name, no other name, praise God, hallelujah, praise God, praise God, come on, give God praise in the house, hallelujah, hallelujah, you may be seated. Just before I bring you the second part of my, my sermon, and I won't be long, but we have an incredible testimony in our church of a, of a young lady that has been coming now, I guess, uh, for a couple of years. We've really watched this young lady grow in, in the Lord and, and really was almost birthed into the family of God in such a, a violent way because of her background. But uh, the Lord has uh, delivered her from false religion, from demonic, I mean some like movie stuff, demonic uh, things and broken, broken chains off her life. And so will you welcome Jay Atha with us? Uh, yeah. This young lady just recently turned uh, 20 years old, is just on fire and uh, hungry for God. We call her Jay, J-E-Y, but Jay. What's your last name, Jay? Tough. Hey, say it into the... Nyanendran. Yeah. Lots of letters. Yeah. Um, but, um, Jay, tell us, tell us what the Lord has done for you. It is, it is just amazing. Even your whole, you know, even today, your whole countenance, is, is just so different and uh, yeah you know and Jay before you speak you know I, Jay is is that type of the prodigal where living in pig swaller sexuality alcoholism demonic humanism new age everything. Um, when I heard her testimony, I said to her, man, it's like you've lived like 10 lives. But tell us, tell us what the Lord did, Jay. Well, thank you, Pastor Tony and Pastor Moses for the chance to share. Um, honestly, the reason why I love Jesus so much is because he's what I was searching for my whole life. My story begins when I was 15. I was born and raised in a Hindu home and my grandparents are Hindu priests. And so um, when I was 15, I went through a really, really hard time in high school. It was so bad I got taken out of school. Mm. And uh, I went to the temple, I bowed down, I went vegetarian, I did everything the Hindu faith told you to do. And yet I found no peace, I found no love, and I had no hope. And when you have no hope, Pastor Tony, 
there's no reason to live. That's and right. so at 15, I tried to take my life seven times. And my mental health was so bad at that point that I thought, I'm such a failure, I can't even take my own life properly. Mm. My mental health was just, my brain was just mush. But uh, somehow I came out of it. And at 16, I, had, I set a goal. I was very determined. I want to be happy. You know, I had survived all of these horrible things in high school, at home, you know, so many horrible things. And I said, I want to be happy. So I went on Google and I searched up how to be happy. And Google said, go get your dream job, go get your dream body, become the best version of yourself, you know, go make all this money and you'll be happy, you'll be happy. And pastor, for three years, I gave my everything to, you know, achieving the things of this world. I chased after adrenaline, I jumped off cliffs, I did crazy things, hoping for a high, hoping for a rush. And yeah, maybe in the moment it was okay. But when I went home that night, mm. I thought to myself, is this all there is to life? And maybe some of you understand what that, that's like when you lie your head down at night and you think, is this all there is? And so I was searching and searching. And finally, thank God, at 19, I heard the gospel message and I gave my life to the Lord. But in an attempt to be happy, I had done so much. I was 19 years old and I had shipwrecked my life, Pastor Tony. If I hadn't been saved, I would not be here today. I would be dead in a ditch. Mm. But I just wanted to be happy. And this world said, if you want to be happy, chase this, chase that, do this, do that. You know, and I, my life was a mess. And the month that I got saved, my dog got hit by a car. I got in a car accident. I lost all my friends. I lost my job. Mm. My family thought I was just crazy. And I found myself all alone on a, in October 2022. And I went outside and I said to the Lord, God, I want to follow you because I realized this might be it. This might be the chance to rewrite my story. And I said to the Lord, I want to do it, but I can't do it. I'm so sorry. And the Lord said to me, Jay, you may have been doing 19 years on your life by yourself, but from this point on, you're not alone. Mm. And I said to God, can you, can you really do this? Look at my life. Look at what I've done. Look at the curses. Look at this. Look at the addictions. Look at the idols. Are, can you really do this? And he said to me, Jay, if you put your faith in me, I won't just transform your life. I'll transform you. Come on. And I thought to myself, Honestly, I thought to myself, I've done so many foolish things with my life. I've wasted my time. I've tried, you know, self-help. I tried this. I tried that. I said, what have I got to lose? What have I got to lose? And I said, God, I am all yours. Mm. And within a year and a half, it's been 16 months, Pastor Tony, I have watched God crush every single idol, break every single addiction, smash every single curse off my life. But the biggest thing it is, Pastor Tony, is that I had a goal. I want to be happy. And I don't have happiness. I have joy. Joy. I have joy. joy. I have peace that makes absolutely no sense. And I realize, it's corny as it sounds, what I was searching for my entire life was the one who made my soul. So, Come thank on. you. Come on. Let's give God praise. Oh, come on, come on. Woo! Yay, God. Yay, God. Yay, God. Yay, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I really believe that God has an incredible plan for, for Jay's life and and really, I think the enemy tried to hold her into the old life. And there was all kinds of demonic activity in those early days. Literally, she would tell me, Pastor, they, these demons come. They muzzle my mouth. It's like I'm paralyzed. They'll, they'll pick me up. They'll throw me against the wall. And I, I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, what is, what, is, what is going on here? What is happening? Because we would pray, and these demons would, uh, would show up again. And, and then the Lord... The Lord exposed a relationship that I wasn't aware of at the moment, but uh, the Lord exposed it. We dealt with it and broke that thing off of Jay's life. And um, yeah, give God praise. Yeah. And I remember the, the Sunday morning, the Lord spoke to me. He said, when, when she comes to church, have her, have her prayed and, and surround her with seven of the elders. And we did that. And uh, she's now part of... Uh, leadership team and she is just doing 
uh, incredibly, incredibly well, and we're so thankful. God gives us identity. God gives us affirmation. God gives us life. Life. You know, people are always searching for the meaning of life and the daredevils that they want to get the the adrenaline because they think that that's what life is about. And, you know, people make statements like, well, you only have one life to live. And But the reality, the reality is this, that life doesn't make sense outside of the Father. Hmm? It just doesn't make sense. It's, 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 it's the only time, is the only time in your life where you understand purpose. You understand destiny. Here, here's the reason why I am here. And, and so not only does he give us identity, he gives us affirmation, he gives us life. But in James chapter 7, sorry, in James chapter 1 and 17, James says this to us, every good gift and every perfect gift come on is from above and it comes down from the father of lights then it says in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning in verse 18 it says of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruit in another translation the word that is used is prized possession prized possession notice the first fruit or the prized possession of all his creatures or his creation have you ever have you ever been driving on a day or maybe you're outside and it's it's sunny but it's cloudy and all of a sudden the 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 sun rays burst through the clouds you know you sometimes you want to stop and just kind of take a picture of that moment that that's really what it's describing how the the light beams of god shine from heaven and they they come down and they shower us with every good that word means beneficial every good meaning meaning pleasant meaning wonderful meaning useful every good gift that comes from the father and every perfect gift that word perfect means maturity so every gift, every meaningful thing, every wonderful thing that comes to from the Father, it comes down to us because He loves us and because He showers us and He wants to make sure that the blessings of God in our lives are matured. I want to just say that when we talk about the blessings of God, the gifts of God, please understand that the gifts of God have to operate according to the will of God. Uh, we, we are people thanking God today and, and even talking about how certain lifestyles are a gift from God, but in reality, they don't line up to the Word of God. It cannot be from God. It cannot be from the Father. It, it must line up. There has to be an alignment with the Word of God that, that these gifts that are proceeding from the heart of the Father. But let me tell you how good the Father really is because the Bible tells us that the sun shines on the just and the unjust. That the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And, and can I say this? Even when we were enemies of God, our Father was still good to us. <laughs> you know, come on. Come on. That, that when Jay says, I, I tried to kill myself seven times, and, and the Father's saying, I'm the author of life, and, and until I, I say you come home, you don't come home. Because God has a design, and the Father has a purpose. And the Father has love. I, I remember being in the Frankfurt airport with a team of our, of our church. As a matter of fact, Joel, I think you were on that, you were on that trip with me as a, as a younger man. And we were, we were heading over to India. We were tired. It was a 20, 21, 24-hour journey. And I, I don't know what religion this particular individual, I don't know if he was Buddhist or he was Hare Krishna or something. And somehow... He found out that we were pastors and people of faith and heading over to India and he began to debate and talk about his God and, and, and various things. And to be honest with you, when, when I'm hungry and when I'm tired, it, it's not a pleasant situation, you know? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody? And, and, uh, and he's at me, he's at me and he's debating and arguing and, 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 and so I finally said to him, sir, I said, sir, I just have one question for you. Just one question. I said, the God that you preach, the God that, that you believe in, this God that you say you serve, does he love you? 
He said, what? I said, the God that you're telling me about that I should follow, that, that you're so enthusiastic about, does he love you? How many know that end of the conversation? Because I said, you see, the father that I serve, he loves me. He loves me. He gave his life, the life of his son for me. And there are so many people that are serving gods they don't know. They don't know their name. They, they don't know their love. They don't know their affection. They, they don't know their embrace. They don't know that, that father, the father wants to give them the kingdom, that the father wants to restore life. And so we see that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father and then the Lord Jesus encouraged us and he said this, in my Father's house huh? in my Father's house there are many mansions now how big is your house if there are many mansions in your house and he said this I go to prepare a place for you I go to prepare a place for you, you have a place in the Father's house that is the, that is the greatest gift We sang there is healing in one name. I had a lady come up to me after the first service. Honestly, I didn't, I didn't recognize her. But she said, Pastor, I was here a few weeks ago. And she said, in the service, you couldn't preach. You couldn't preach. You were only healing for people. And I, I have a sister who is dying with cancer. She's been diagnosed, gone to the doctors. And, and so she said, you were praying for healing in this name of Jesus. And she said, I, I came up, not for myself, but I came up for my sister. And... And she said they had gone through all the things the doctor had given her the reports and they were in a certain stage and they had done a biopsy. And, and she said, I came up. I came up for prayer for my sister. And she said, when my sister went back to the doctor, the doctor could not understand why he couldn't find the cancer. He couldn't find the cancer. And this is what I love. She said, I will bring you the report. You see, you see, when, when Jesus heals, you can go get the report. You can go get the report. Because science is meant to prove that our God is alive and that our God is a healer. He's a healer. He's a healer. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He sets people free. He sets them free. He heals their lives. Puts a crown upon you. Oh, somebody ought to give God a shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Father. The Father, here's my last point, and then we're going we're gonna to worship, we're going to sing. Not only does He give us identity, not only does He give us affirmation, He gives us life, He, he gives us gifts, he makes, he makes room for us, but I want you to understand that our Father is a resurrector. See, Jesus didn't take up His own life. The Bible says the Father caused Him to rise from the dead. He said on the cross, I, I commit my spirit into your hands, knowing that, that it is totally up to you, Father, now to revive me, to bring me back to life, not, not, from, a, not from a state of a coma, but it actually from the state of death, that, that you're going to have to resurrect me. And there were some good people. There, was, there were some good people in the day of Jesus that they came and they... They brought him a brand new tomb. Very respectful, very honorable, but I, I want to tell you, my friends, listen, that the best that man can do for you is to buy you a brand new tomb. Hmm? We love you. We honor you. We want to see you buried. We want to see you buried in respect. We're going to buy you a brand new tomb. But I'm telling you, you have a father. You have a father that can visit you in the tomb. You have a father that wants to take you out of the tomb. You have a father that wants to resurrect you today. You have a father that will leave you in the tomb. Yes. 
Jay said to God, did you hear her? Can, can you really do this? <laughs> can, you, can you really break these things? Can you really deliver me? Can you really set me free? Can you, can you do this? Because watch this, the enemy, the enemy likes to show himself so strong. But I'm telling you, the Bible says, greater is he that is within us than he that's in the world. <laughs> I believe the Lord would say, just watch me. <laughs> just watch me, Jay. Just watch me. God loves it. The Father loves it when they tell him he can't do certain things. He loves the odds. He, he loves to be challenged. He loves to be, can I say, outnumbered. He's a resurrector. I want to take you back just for a moment to Luke 15, 22. This is the prodigal son who was living like a pig, literally eating pig slop, which for a Jew was the lowest of the low. The Bible says when he came to his senses, he realized, I'm living like a pig. I'm eating, I'm eating slop, and I, I, all my money is gone. The prostitutes are gone. The, the friends are gone. The, the alcohol is gone. All those things are gone, and all I'm left with is a bunch of pigs. And he says something. I will go back to my father. Huh? But I recognize my shame. I recognize what I've done to my father and his name and his house. And so I'm going to go back, but not as a son. Let me go back as a slave. Let me, let me see if I can go back as a slave because even the slaves live better than these pigs. My, my father, my father is such a good father that even the servants are living better than these animals and living better than me. And, and my friends, I'm telling you, we are living in a generation where, where those that are living in pig parlors are coming back home. They are coming back home. They are coming to the father's house. And so he shows up and he gives his speech. A speech of repentance, a speech of brokenness. Father, I've sinned. I want to be a slave. And like the father doesn't even hear him. In verse 22, it says, but, I love that word. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe. Come on. <laughs> I, want, I, I want to tell you, Gucci has nothing on the robes that God creates. He'll dress you better than Armani. He says, bring out, bring out the best robe and, and put it on him. Clothe him. Clothe him. Clothe his nakedness. That, that robe represents acceptance. Again, I, identity. We are identifying that he's not a slave, but he's my son. And then, and then he says this. He says, and, and by the way, get a ring. Get a ring and, and put the ring on his finger. The, the ring... In the Bible, it represents authority. It represents covenant. It, it, it is saying that this is the signet ring of the family. Yes, yes. That the son has been restored. That the son has nobility once again. And, and then he, he says, and I, and I wanted to get some sandals. Yes. Why? Because you see, the sons had shoes, but the servants were barefoot. And, and my son is not going to be identified, is not going to be identified as a servant walking around bare feet, which by the way, when you put on the whole armor of God, do you know that, that there, are, there are sandals on your feet? Why, why is this important? Because only sons and daughters can receive inheritance. But not only am I going to clothe you, and not only am I going to put a ring on your finger, and, and not only am I going to put the latest sandals on your feet, then he says, and bring the fatted calf. Huh? Bring the fattest cow we have. Because we are, we are going to be merry. We are going to be partying. We are, we're going to have a barbecue. Huh? Jay said she turned to being a vegetarian. Unbiblical. God deliver you from all that stuff. Huh? 
God, God deliver you from fish on Friday. Huh? Bless God, every good Friday comes. I say to my wife, get all the protein you got. I'm going to, because I've been, I've been set free from that stuff. Huh? I've been set free. God's a, God's a foodie. There it is. Now watch what he says. For this my son was dead. And is alive again. And he was lost. And is found. And they began to be merry. And this is why heaven rejoices. At one. At one. Because the lost are found. And my friends, we have found the Father. 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 In Christ. In Christ, we have found the Father. And and so we're going to leave this place celebrating. I hope you have fatted calves and fatted chickens and fatted lamb today. And bless God. Be merry. Be merry. Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice because we have found the Father. We have found the Father. Our God is a good God. Our Father is a good Father. And we are blessed. So we're going to sing, He is alive. How many know He's alive? How many know? How many know? How many know? How many know? Come on, Kimberly. <laughs> he's alive. Now, if you know you serve a risen king, He's not dead. He's not in the grave, but He lives. Somebody shout, He's alive.
impacted and that you felt God's presence. We're always accessible to you. If you ever have any questions, please email us at info at allpeopleschurch.ca. We would love to hear from you. We'll see you next week.